ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Rewriters Room. Um, we are the people uh, who are better on the mic than Paul Heyman and Miz. Um, we, we are better at potting than the WWE is at picking Keith Lee's new theme music, but they are pushing him extremely well. So even if, you know, the music ain't right, the push is right. Uh, I'm Armand. I am the leader of the uh, the watch for Otis to cash in his money in the bank contract. Now we got Mandy on Raw. We got Miz and Morrison messing with Otis. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, fellas, I, how y'all doing? Chilling, chilling, chilling. What's up, y'all? It's CC, aspiring philanthropist. Um, man, her business, bro. I'm all in, man. I know we're going to get to it, but I just had to start with that. I, I, I feel so black right now, nigga. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I got for today. I just, man, that's where I'm at right now. That's it. Uh, what's going on, y'all? It's uh, Channing. I am uh, personally ready for Oscar, as I always am. I stand at attention, ready to serve whenever she needs me. Um, I recent, <laughs> recently tried out to be part of Retribution. Um, I make a second <laughs> round of interviews, so we'll see. Um, I didn't really fit into the costume. Like, the black wasn't as slimming as I thought it would be. But... <laughs> I felt like I had good questions. I felt like they liked my responses. So I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> Might do that. Okay. Uh, we're gonna get into that. Call that. <laughs> yeah, no, good, good luck, man. I hope I hope that you pick your calls We're gonna get into our top moments of the week before we get into our main topic. Uh, me, what I want to talk about is the continuation of this Roman Reigns storyline. You know, he came back, he um, beat up Braun and Fiend, then he won the title a week later. And then him and Paul revealed the relationship and how he called Paul Heyman. And Paul kind of seems a little like fearful of Roman a little bit. Like the, the, their relationship is, it's definitely the relationship like Paul had with Brock, but Paul kind of feared Brock a little bit. And when we saw that in certain situations, um, like right before the Roman match at, at SummerSlam 2018, where um, Brock like held Paul down and was like choking him. And you could tell like, that was the first time their relationship, like besides when Paul would turn on him, that was the first time you saw like, it wasn't a friendly thing. Like there was right. a real respect dynamic there. And with Roman, it feels it was the same. Paul has a very um, high reverence of, of Roman's family and their legacy. And, and I love that they're going that family legacy angle. They actually talked about that on the A show channel, J5 and Meals. But um, I think with Lavin. I said you're. <laughs> um, but I think the really dope thing about what they're doing with Roman and what didn't happen with Brock is Roman is showing up on TV every week. And he's also fighting in matches on TV. Even if he came in at the very last minute, he's still in these matches. And that's also cool because with certain heels, they would do it where it's kind of like a, like a weaselly, kind of you know, like, like cheating type of thing. But with Roman, it's just like, I'm the top guy. I come to the match when I want to, I show up and I win. And that's literally what he did. He showed up and he won. And granted, like Jay Uso was doing his thing with, by himself in the match. But um, I think, there's a lot of cool angles they can go with this Roman thing. If they have him completely turn on his family and then destroy his bloodline, that's cool. If they have him make this super evil faction of the bloodline, I think that would be cool. And like with Paul Heyman leading them, like there's history there. So it's, there's so many cool things. And I love that Roman is really like, you know, because I think what, one of the big concerns of him as a star is like his, his promos, his mic skills weren't always that good. And rather than having him be this like baby face, kind of like how they were almost pushing him like Cena, now he can be this badass heel who just doesn't talk as much. He just said some real slick shit, cash talk, and then he comes in and he beats you up. It's like, oh well, like the, there it is. So I'm 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 loving this this Roman stuff so far. They let that nigga be himself finally. Yeah. yeah. Like that's all they would like. You could see it underneath. Like when he would have to like go out and do some of those scripted lines, you could see him trying to tweet. Like I could hear it because I could tell when like people are like riffing like that. Like, I was like, oh, he's trying to put something into this. I'm like, and then every once in a while they would let it, like they would just let him say something like how he would normally say it, and you could tell it just rolls off his tongue. And it was like, whoa, 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 I want to see that shit. And now we're seeing that all the time. It's fire. Like this is the Roman I've been waiting to see. Yep. Three quick things about Roman. One. So glad he took off that goddamn Kevlar vest, bro. I hated that shit, dog. Like, you're supposed to be the biggest, toughest guy on the fucking roster, and you're wearing fucking body armor, bro. Take them fucking wristbands off. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, I know I was supposed to cuss, but I, like, it bothered me so much that, like, he would wrestle, like, Brock Lesnar, who's in, like, shorts, and then be getting thrashed around, but you got on a whole back plate. Like, what? The vision would never make any sense to me. Two, and this is something I've not done the full research on yet, but just off the top of my mind, I feel like this is true. Um, 
and this is also kind of racist, so I apologize in advance. But I feel like <laughs> I feel like Samoan wrestlers always do better when they lead into the like black adjacentness, like The Rock, Rikishi, The Usos. Like as soon as they get a little like thuggerish, a little bit like man, got here with that. Like a little, like a little like hip hop, they do so much better. Like when as soon as the Usos went from like oh we're dancing colorful to like the Uso penitentiary took off. Rikishi, too cool, took off. The Rock turns heel yeah. and is like, with the you know, Versace and Ooh. like, you know, with the shades, took off. And so I feel like when Roman, like you were saying, when he leans to more his authentic, like, you know, I'm for the people, like, Roman, like, I don't care about that, I think that's fire. Three, to your point about the family, I feel like what they are inevitably building up to is like, Roman goes through all of his family and then the Rock shows like, hey dog, like, we don't <laughs> do that here, bro. Like, we don't, you don't, I know you think you, this is you a big dog and you like, you always was like the star, but like, you got to remember you came from in the rock. That's, that's definitely WrestleMania Hollywood. Like I know Vince got Ooh. that in the chamber. Cause that's definitely, it's definitely happening. As soon as crowds come back, Roman's cutting some fire promo after he just took out like the Miz and Morrison or something. And then it's just, the rock comes up as like, Hey, like you, like you getting out of hand. Dog. And he, he'll try to think, he'll try and talk to him and like play like, Hey, like, I know they don't understand you. Like you just getting out of you. Like, you just kind of lost your way. And he'll just like blow rock off one time. And then it's going to be on. I need it. I need it. I need it in my veins. <laughs> nah, people, people think that's the move for WrestleMania 37. Again, it's a matter of whether they're going to have crowds. We see that uh, the, the NFL is experimenting with crowds at their stuff and AEW has been doing that too. And, you know, <laughs> people are a bit more responsible with it than others. AEW don't care, dog. <laughs> they but, get somebody to kill out here. If, if they do pull that off at Mania 37, I think that would be very far. I think especially if you consider the parallels between Roman and Cena and, you know, Roman having a, a Mania main event versus The Rock as, as a heel. And, you know, we're going to get into Cena later and him not turning heel, but I think it'll just be a really interesting kind of uh, contrast. Um, but we'll, what are you guys' uh, top moments of, uh, of the week in wrestling? Mine's not necessarily like a single moment. It's just like, I really am really impressed with what they're doing with Raw Underground. Like I thought it had the very high potential to be like really corny or really like too Fight Club adjacent -y in it, but it's like very like cool. It's very like, and I love how like you get to see people you normally wouldn't see. Like I never see Dio Madden wrestle. I never he never wrestles, but that he's wrestling a lot. And like it's cool to see them just like fight. And like I think it helps a lot of the wrestlers who aren't as like refined with the like pure wrestling and like are more just like grapplers. Like the two that came to mind was it. I think it's Marina Shafir, the two girls who were Shayna Baszler, who like I remember they wrestled in NXT in a, a six woman tag match. I was like, oh they, this is not gonna work. Like they cannot bump, they cannot sell, they can't do anything but like they can really fight in real life and so like the raw underground helps them look cooler it helps the hurt misses look cool even like Dolph Ziggler who I will die on that who I love Dolph Ziggler like because he can sell so well him like legitimately getting fought by like Ivar and like looks cool because oh like he's just like grappling with him so I love raw underground I love the aesthetic the one thing I hope they don't make it like a pay-per-view like we're having a raw underground match I feel like you could save that kind of stuff but I do like just kind of the sub storyline of like these are these kind of underground other thing we have going on. I think that's really dope. Yeah, it's really fire. Like the way, like I, I'm tuned in like every time for every match. It's gonna be somebody that you know, like, and then uh, people around the ring. I'm watching yeah. them too. I'm like, wow. I'm interested in like their reactions and like, I'm like, wow. I'm trying to see. I'm trying to see. And then another thing I'm doing now is I'm looking to see like, all right, am I gonna spot the person who's gonna be the next somebody or yeah, whatever? Yeah, he's, I wonder yeah, yeah. Who's exactly. here? Like that. And just having all of that going on. And then you know what they did that was really, really smart? And it's probably somebody picking up on the fact that it's 2020 and that's how things are moving in entertainment now. Really, really smart. They kept it short. They always yep. keep it so short. So, like, you kind of want to see more or whatever, but, like, it's just, like, you got to come back next week or whatever. Yeah. You see how it go. Yeah, and they're, like, gambled. Like, like Swerve was tweeting about how he had, like, X amount of dollars on Dolph. And, like, they're tweeting about it. So it's, like, it seems like a real, like, thing where it's, like, yeah, we're wrestling. Yeah. But there's also this thing where, like, even outside of the ring, we, like, have this competition. Like, it's really dope by the way they're, like, playing it. Too. Right. Plus, when they beef and that shit, like, actually, I'll be like, hold on. Like, this is this is a little bit more real. Like, I can tell <laughs> this is a little bit. You're about to get yeah. to it. And, like, to, to go off of Channing's point where it gives you an opportunity to see talent that you wouldn't see, it also gives talent you do see a lot another arena to fight in. We saw them schedule KO versus Aleister Black in Raw Underground first. That's genius because you don't want to rush that singles match. You know that singles match is going to be fire. I don't think that they got an official one yet. Oh, no, but, I mean, besides Raw Underground, yeah. And then, yeah. And then Aleister screwed KO in his match with Ori. But like, yeah, like you don't want to rush that match. You want that to be on a pay-per-view. 
And you want that, you want to build that up over time if you're trying to turn Alistair heel. And KO's a great baby face to have him go against. So Raw Underground was a really good spot for them to start and to let KO get a, a victory uh, for for lack of a better word yeah. going into it. So it's not just one sided the whole time. Uh CC, how about you, bro? Yeah, man. That they're like it's so weird. They're like such in a groove right now with the booking and like making all this work the right way. I like, I look at everything and usually I have like something to say about, you know, maybe I would put so-and-so here. Maybe I'll, I think about it and I like, I think about it while I'm watching. And then I think about it after I'm watching. And then like the next day I'll think about it. And I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't change shit. I don't have better ideas than that. Like they're like everything about the way it's like, I, I'm with it, man. Like it's, I'm here for it. Yeah. Uh, and we saw a big addition uh, to the Hurt Business this past week. I think us as, as a podcast, we got to talk about the, the, the hottest thing going for, for Black wrestling fans. Um, this is Nation of Domination plus Evolution plus... plus Wu-Tang like, Clan plus yeah, good music plus OVOXO plus Young Money, YMCMB, the Mafia. Rock, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hot Boys. We here, dog. <laughs> They didn't rush Cedric joining. Like, they, they were able to build a story out of that. They got the title on Bobby. You know, they kind of showed Cedric, like, damn, maybe rolling with Apollo and, and Ricochet and Ali isn't the way. And then they, they, they do that turn. He's got his pants immediately for the Hurt Business. Uh -huh. You saw he fixed his hair up a little more. Yeah. He, he was going to be in a match. Like, it's, it's great, man. And I, and I think that they can do a lot of great things with them. I still want to see them get into the tag team picture. I mean, you don't got to rush it, but I think Cedric and Shelton is a great tag team. You you, 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 and you keep MVP as just the mouthpiece and fight Bruh. them often, like, that's that that's amazing. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really messing with the herbage. I think, I think another thing is, too, is genius. And I, I love, first of all, thank, thank God for MVP. Man, like, he's, bruh, I just, man, thank you so much. Like, everybody's shining right now because you. But, like, another thing that was really cool is them, like, playing with the the psychological uh, dynamics or whatever. Like, right when Cedric joins, you know, they all say, you know, it's cool, whatever, let's go VIP lounge and Shelton stops him or whatever, which is really cool that Shelton's doing it because, like, you know, we get to finally see Shelton, like, really, like, like you know, display, like, actual personality and all that other stuff. And he pulls that off of saying, like, hey, you know, I'm the one who doesn't really trust you. Like, how in every cheesy uh, early 2000s movie, like, like, it was just like Fast and Furious was, with always one hate one. And the crew was like, oh, I don't trust the new guy. Like, that, he pulled it off perfectly. And Cedric was like, yeah. But he, like, he said, yeah, in a way where I was just like, huh. Like, <laughs> like and everybody just, so, like, they're killing it on all fronts. Like, it's just, man, it's amazing to see. And I'm just like, wow. Like, I get to watch this. And another thing that I think about was, like, this is normal for some kids. Like, this is going to be their normal. I'm like, that's so fire. Yeah. That is so fire. Yeah. No, nah, and, and I, I'm, 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 I'm personally hoping that they don't take it the route where Cedric is just working with Hurt Business and he's being like a spy and then he turns yeah, up. Kind of like how Randy Orton did with Wyatt Family. Like, I'm really hoping they go full heel with Cedric because Cedric as, as a face was cool. Like, I definitely felt sympathy for him. He puts on great matches, but... I don't know. There's just there's something to heels and like kind of giving people who are floundering, giving them th that edge and and like like yo, you, you're getting more TV time, but you're with the hurt business. Like make the most of it. And um, I, I, we're, Raw's going on right now, so I don't see what Cedric's doing. But I, I think he is going to make the most out of this opportunity. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Jenny, you got anything before we uh, get into the main talk? Uh, no. I think just prefacing what I'm about to say again, I have nothing against white people. Um, and so some of the comments I'm about to make about John wait, Cena. Hold on, wait, before you keep going, before you keep going, nigga, that sounds like every conversation <laughs> I have with older black people in my family. Yeah. Like, before I start. <laughs> I just have a lot of notes and I see like Eminem, MGK written here a lot. And I really don't want people, I know people love logic and I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. <laughs> really, I know y'all love that suicide song and it's like nothing personal. I really, I fuck with mental health. I go to therapist myself, but like, these are just my thoughts. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this week uh, with heel turns in mind, um, we're going to talk about one of the biggest baby faces in WWE history. Um, we're talking about John Cena, leader of uh, the C Nation leader, uh, Mr. Hustle, loyalty, respect. 
Um, I know my first introduction to him, I actually didn't like him much when I, when I was first introduced to him. Right. Um, you know, I was a big Brock Lesnar guy. He was facing Brock for the title. So I'm like, all right, anyone who's facing Brock, nah, I, I can't mess with them. And, you know, the, the rapper gimmick seemed a little too much. Like, even, even and it was, like, cheesy and it was corny. And, like, it definitely worked for certain people who it worked for. For me, I was like, mm, I, I don't love this. It's not age well. It's not age well if you watch it back now. It's so I think, tough. I think that was the moment where I was, uh, where I think it's funny that that was the tip of the iceberg or whatever, but it was just really like one little straw on the camel's back where I was like, all right, this is too much racist shit. I can't, all right. I, this is still too racist. I'm not doing this. <laughs> now, fortunately, through that, we saw him shift to babyface. He beat. A big show for the U.S. title at WrestleMania. He went on his run up to beating JBL for the WWE title. Then he started showing up on 106 and Park, and he put out a rap album that went platinum. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, this guy's kind of showing up in some spaces that I like. Like my, my perspective on him is is a little different. Um, and of course, as kids, you know, we're not we're not fully into the fact that like they're doing that intentionally. Like it's written that way. Like that wasn't really how John Cena was, but. You know, seeing him step out of the ring and do other stuff, rapping, and he like he he, he was about to uh, do the fu to a cameraman on 106 and Park. I was like, oh, this is this is lit. Like I'm I'm messing with it. So, you know, John kind of came in and he kind of rubbed people the wrong way, and then he kind of grabbed our hearts in the same way. And then just from there, from, from when he first won that WWE title, he took off. He got drafted to Raw. He beat. Uh, Shawn Michaels in the main event of WrestleMania one year. He beat Triple H in the main event of WrestleMania one year. Um, from there, Royal Rumble victory, coming back off injury. Um, fire, fire return. Top yeah. five return all time. And Madison Square Garden, top five return all time. There's, so far. I'm sure we, we can all just rattle off so many specific moments that John Cena's had that it's really like, you know, like this guy or not, he puts on an amazing show. He's committed to, to world wrestling entertainment. Um, and he, he always keeps things interesting, whether you're cheering for him, cheering for him or cheering against him. He always kept things interesting. But I think one of the biggest question marks on his career for people is the fact that after he, he came in heel, you know, as, as, as the white rapper, then he transitioned and he became everyone's favorite. And he went on this from 2005 to like now. <laughs> like he's forever. He's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He never turned once. But everyone's been like, you know, because. And we're seeing it. We saw it with Seth Rollins with his universal title run. We saw it with Roman Reigns when they were trying to push him. People turn on people when they're faced for too long or when they're successful for too long. And the question is always, should we turn him heel? So I felt like there were four specific moments in Cena's career um, since he really became the guy that he is where it was probably prime time for him to turn heel. Uh, it was when the the uh, Nexus debuted and and they were beating him up for like a year. Um, it was when <laughs> it, was, it was on his ass. <laughs> and then CM Punk when he you know did the pipe bomb and won the title and then left and then came back and beat John Cena again. Then there was the beef with The Rock that went all, all over the course of three WrestleManias. Um, and then finally when Daniel Bryan beat him at SummerSlam 2013. Um, so I guess to start for you guys, if, if, if you had to pick one of those moments or pick any moment really that you could identify, that would have been the ideal time for John Cena to, to turn heel. Uh, well, well, what would it have been? Uh, so I want to just commend you firstly, this is the type of professional you are for not <laughs> acknowledging ruthless aggression, John Cena, because that is not something we ever need to talk about ever again. That, that, I'm so glad they scrapped that shit, because that shit, I was like watching that before, like despite him, like, yeah, we just, you were just like, that never happened. Um, I, I think, so like the, fu like the troll in me wants to say that he should have turned heel after he proposed to um, Nikki Bella or whatever the fuck we did, because that didn't end well. But um, honestly, I think the only one where it would have given it like due justice would have been The Rock. Like, I think he would have had to, like, in that moment where The Rock, like, holds his hand up, he would have had to, like, throw him into the Megatron. Or, like, throw him into the screen or something. Like, he, it, I think Cena's heel turn would have had to be so momentous, where it had to be something like that, where it's like, I am, like, but how I think about it is, but John Cena, I think part of the issue with him turning heel, I guess we can get to it now, is that, like, I was joking earlier, but like because of his gimmick, there are a lot of avenues for him to become heel. Like you can't yeah. have a authority, John Cena. Like that doesn't make yeah. any sense. And if he becomes just like 
I'm really tough and edgy, he basically becomes like Marshall Mathers from Eight Mile. And it's like, I really don't want to watch that either. Mm -hmm. And so like, I think the only heel he can become is like, essentially Brock Lesnar. Like, I am better than you. You need me. Because I was looking at the roster from 2011, 12, especially. Like, there is no one. It is him and Sheamus, dog. <laughs> and it's funny you bring up that time period because they wanted, there were plans to turn him heel with, with when he was beefing with The Rock. They made new music, new gear, and they were going to push Sheamus. Like, Sheamus was the guy that they were like, okay, because if he turns heel, we need a big baby face to take his spot. And I, I remember back then, like, Sheamus' push was crazy. Like, his first week on the main roster, I think he put Cena through a table, he won this Rising Stars Battle Royal, and he beat Cena for the title. So, like, the WWE believed in Sheamus a lot. So, just, like, thinking about that and, like, Sheamus being the top babyface from 2011 to now, shit would have nah, been no. so different. And uh, oddly enough, Cena's um, – the only reason Cena didn't turn heel, he had a deal with, with Kmart. And they were like, we can't have our, our, our biggest act be a heel when we're about to have this deal with Kmart because kids buy his stuff, kids look at him like a hero, all that. And it's like, damn, we got cheated out of John Cena really like going full green on the rock because yeah. of the Kmart deal. Like, Kmart aren't even around like that anymore. Like, <laughs> bet, bet on heel, Vince. Come on like now. A dying brand had the yeah. nerve. <laughs> The nerve. The nerve. <laughs> they said, Vince, we need those shorts. We need those jorts. We need the jorts. Keep them in the jorts. Like, no, this man is sitting right there. You see Lil Wayne got truck fit all in Macy's. He had, he had, uh, Lil Wayne had truck fit in Macy's when I was still working there. That was ages ago. They and sold, they, like a G. they sold G in this shit in Macy's. They did. Yeah. <laughs> they, them, thick, them thick white beaters, they sold those yeah. there. John Cena, you good? He or John Cena would have done numbers at Macy's. He would have been in, um, What's the tops and bottoms like crazy? Like he'd have been all up in K and G, but like they didn't want him to be great. It's all right though. But no, I seriously, I think that was the only thing. I think like the CM Punk thing, I think what would have happened is he would have, because CM Punk was so, for like a return cool, his heel turn would have looked almost like childish in response to where it's like, oh, this guy just happened to call you out. And like Cena's not a Weasley heel, kind of like we were talking about Roman. Like he, they have that same energy where it's like, no, I need to be a tough heel. And I think the issue with giving him a manager like Paul Heyman would have been that Cena is really good on the mic. Mm -hmm. Like, when Cena starts talking that talk, like, even without, like, the hip-hop influence or, like, the rapper, like, Cena really used to really bust people down. Yeah. When he said, I think he saw the JBL, he said, The Undertaker must have beat you blind because you can't see me. I said, all right, <laughs> he's special. Like, he, Cena on the mic is, like, a top-tier talent. So, like, I think he would have had to stand alone. So, you can't really give him a manager. So, he would had to be just, like, I'm the best ever. I'm the GOAT. Y'all need me. Y'all thought Seamus could do it. He can't. Y'all thought Morris could do it. He can't. Talk cash about Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels. Like, anything y'all want me to do, I've done. Like, it has to be that type of, like, heel. So, think, so that's why that's my one moment. Because I, I would have gotten that. Like, I, I am – I'm a glutton for – the arrogant, you niggas cannot beat me type nigga. And then I think about John Cena and you're like, you made a really good point. And it's just like, because like, because of who he is and his character and stuff like that, you can't, there's so many yeah. ways you can go. So I think like after the pipe bomb, it like, it really goes like a, um, you know, like when Hove said like, okay, you made one hole, make another hole. Like Cena just goes like that all the time. Oh no! And, and, and the way, and the way that uh, the way that um, the way that Hogan actually has sway in the background and stuff like that, and him leaving, and then like him actually having way more too much yeah. power at WCW and stuff like that, John Cena, Cena's character should have been that, like acting like That's that, just fine. like like on like people saying like, oh yeah, you guys like talk about you know me having influence behind the scenes. Let's show that on camera. Let's show how I'm really like deciding like nah. He not gonna have the match. That wouldn't be good for ratings or whatever or whatever. And then when they say, "Well, that's the match that you know the general manager said," it's like, "Well, you can run that match, and then I won't show up later, and you won't make that much advertising dollars." And he breaks down the numbers, fam. Oh, I'd be so know, fired off. I would. <laughs> I would be like, "What, yo? I mean, you can't. The numbers don't lie. What do you want me to do?" <laughs> like, if he, if he was just like. Nah, I'm not wrestling. Like, just have somebody else do it. Like, oh you need, God. you want me to wrestle, and I want to do this. If you're not gonna give me what I want, I'm just not gonna do it. That's Basically, not, like, because that was the start. Like that, if I, if I'm not mistaken, that was around the start where he really like was getting those sponsorship deals. Like, he's really like on his own, John Cena, John Cena. So mm -hmm. it's just like he could have just been like, you know, I can't really 
wait, when is Raw? Uh, I'm not going to uh, I got to shoot. I got to do a movie. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what people say about The Rock, like, really lead into, like, oh, I got to go. Yes. Um, I got to yeah. shoot Fast and Furious. I, I can't. That would really I know cool. y'all, and, and, like, talk to, like, almost, like, the reverse of what he did with The Undertaker. Like, I know y'all want me to face Undertaker, but I'm not because I'm busy. Yeah. And, like, it's just yeah. like, I don't care what y'all want. I'm too busy for this. When like, he that said would, that, I was like, wait, there's something there. Hold on. <laughs> like That would be so far. Man, oh, man. Yeah, so, yeah, that's how, that's what I would like to see. Yeah, I think I think The Rock would have been that heel turn would have made the most sense. I would have liked to see the whole John Cena, Daniel Bryan thing in 2013. I think it was noble how they had Cena like be like, yo, I'm gonna give Bryan this match. Like this is my opponent. And then, you know, having Bryan beat him, the 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 Randy Cash in, like that's iconic. Like that that, that moment I, I, I laugh every time it happens, just cause like that's that's just such a Triple H Randy Orton move. But imagining Daniel Bryan wins and doesn't get cashed in on and actually gets a decent run with the belt, I think that sets up a couple good pay per view matches afterwards. Where Cena's like, "Oh man, like you know, I gave you this match. I thought you deserved it. I thought that I could beat you. I couldn't beat you, but now I gotta prove that I can beat you." It, it, would, it would almost remind me of uh, Christian when, when he was on the one more match stuff with Randy Orton. Oh, yeah. Like I think it could have been something like that. And again, it puts. Cena in a weird spot, but Cena's not a beggar. He doesn't beg for matches. He doesn't like, he's never really fighting from like behind to, for lack of a better word. Like he's always like, he's, he's always stepping up to the challenge and like he's, he's pretty like respectful when he takes a loss. So it, I guess it would have been weird to book that. Um, but that would have been something that I'm interested in because like it, it's, it's, it's so tough that like, like him getting so popular really put WWE into this corner. Like, you know, they tried to build up Sheamus. CM Punk was was white hot and, and uh, was a strong face for a while. But no one really picked up the same steam as, as Cena. Like, even like Randy Orton's been around for as much time as, as Cena has. And Randy Orton was a pretty strong face. But, like, we see that he's, he's better as a heel. And I guess his merch didn't move the same way Cena's was because they've had no problem making Orton a heel. Like, like, I think Orton's turn, like, <laughs> every other year. Every other year. <laughs> yeah. year. So, but, like, he, he was around. He's, he's got, like, three less championship rings than, than Cena. I remember even, actually, they put the Money in the Bank briefcase on Cena in, like, 2011. And I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's, that's interesting. And then he ended up losing his match to Punk. But looking back, like, either him turning heel when he had the briefcase and cashing in on Punk or him losing to Punk and then turning heel after – after he lost the, the briefcase, that could have worked too. But, you know, at the end of the day, unfortunately, it comes back to he's the biggest star in WWE. If not him, who are we going to put there? Who's going to move merch the same? Who's going to do these daily show visits? Who's going to be going to all these these press events? Who's going to be able to do, like, Make-A-Wish Foundation stuff and, like, kids pick him? Because, you right. know, he or John Cena wouldn't afford those opportunities. But, I mean, let's – well, we can try. Like, if, if you guys had to pick someone – in John Cena's run, who you would push as as a face if they committed to Cena going heel, and and, and this is from 2005 to now, and like there's been a lot of people who have come and gone. Yeah. Um, but who who would you guys try to push as the as the person? Hmm. I think specifically as a foil to Cena, and like this is gonna be a problematic take. Honestly, I think you'd had to pick Brock Lesnar. You'd had to have Brock, and not the typical like face heel, like Brock's a nice guy, but it could be like Brock is basically, I don't know, like who's a really boring middle linebacker, Luke Keekley or something. Like he's just like he's this all American. He just wrestles. It just fights. Just likes to fight. And John Cena's here. <laughs> what? He's like a more interesting Jack Swagger, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like, because Brock can't talk, so you know, you, you can just get Paul away, Paul away from him, and then you're like, the basically the angle would be, oh, damn, just wrote it. Um, the angle would be Cena's on this tear. He's like telling Vince what he will and won't do. He like, f you attitude adjustment because I'm a grown man. He f you <laughs> Shane at some point almost gets crazy talking to Stephanie. Triple H tries to step up to him, takes Triple H down. Then there's this whole thing of like basically like the mad king John Cena like we gotta get him out of here no one will stop him and at the very last thing Vince you see him on the phone like hey I need you I need you to come back like I'm I'll give you whatever you want I don't care how much money you need like I need you and then you see your next week on Raw John Cena going crazy then you go and the whole story on is that like 
Vince, I, I, like, I basically sold my soul to the devil. I asked Brock to come back because I need him to stop you. And that's how you make Brock this like kind of like anti-hero like Venom where he's not really a good guy, but he's taking out the guy we all hate. And so then people then like Brock. And then Brock is the only other person who like, you know, he might not be like today's show because he's kind of like not that good of a talker, but like he sells merch. He has the crossover appeal where you could get him maybe a spot on ESPN or on an NFL game or something. And like mm-hmm. he has the physical presence where like maybe not in video, but in pictures, if you're like, hey, we're the WWE, we have Trish Stratus, we have Brock Lesnar, we have The Rock. Like that's a very impressive, like baby face, like 2005 era picture. And I think that's that's kind of what you're going for at that point is that like you you're not gonna get someone to like match which with him like I said besides CM Punk or like something like that so you have to go for like what is like the anti-hero to Cena's like almost like anti-villain and I think it would just have to be someone I guess you could have Batista fill that role I guess but I think the issue with Batista is that like he is also like Cena like they both do movies and stuff so you're like both of y'all don't want to be here for real like so and whereas Brock at least early on he was very committed to wrestling if you would have got him to stay and be that baby face which like once he blew up he really wasn't like once he was with Heyman he was like he would fight against Heyman but like Brock was never really a good guy he was just like the lesser of two evils I think getting him to fill that role especially now or like later in his career when he was much more of a bigger star I think that would be what you'd have to do. Yeah, he would have been the, the second kind of like the next version of Stone Cold because he's not a good person. You know, he's not a good guy, but you're mm-hmm. rooting for him. Yeah, that's way better than like my idea. But it's funny because a person who is my idea would be the same. They would approach it this kind of the same way. And it was in your story and it would be Triple H. And I can't pick. I don't know what time. It would have probably had to be somewhere around the 2010s ish, like around that time. 2010 probably and i can't even remember because that's that's where it's fuzzy for me but um it would have to be a time where it's like a little later into cena's career it's, it's established that he's the guy you know whatever and then like but he does that same thing and it's like triple h kind of has this thing where he's just like am i the only one who sees that like this is too much like and then like you know he kind of like feel because it's not even a thing where he's like a good guy or anything he's like trying to stop him but he's just like wait, hold on. And then, like, maybe he makes parallels to Sean or whatever, and, like, he comes out and he tries to, like, emotionally talk to the scene, and he's like, look, you're heading down the path. I had a friend go down this path before. Didn't quite work out. You know, it's like, it could be, like, he could approach him from that standpoint. And save C- you from yourself. Mm-hmm. And John yeah. Cena would just disrespect him, and from that point, it would just be beef. Like, <laughs> that, would, that, would, that would be a good one. But, like, and then, like, I could just see Triple H doing it in the name of, like, like, just kind of, like, because – the one thing that Triple H, no matter how slimy or nice of a person he's playing, he's always on the, the side of the business. He's always saying he's on the side of the business. And he could be saying, like, John, what you're doing is ruined. Like, I'm not going to let this business burn or whatever. So, right. like, you have yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. like two bad kings at the same time. Yeah, yeah I can see that. Like, you see, you see Triple H in, like, a meeting with Vince and John. And John says something crazy. Triple H's like, you want him to just talk to you like that? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, bro, like, you just let him, what? Because like, when do we book our own matches? Like, since when does that happen? And you're like, yeah, you like, just like Triple H being like kind of offended. Like, I've done all this for you and you're letting John like walk all over me now. Like, I'm your son-in-law. Like, what's going on? And yeah. like, I, I can see that being, that, that could be it. That would be fire. That would be fire. Yeah, I think my pick, and it's it's tough. Like, there, there are some people I wanted to be big. Like, I remember John Morrison had a great run. Like, he, yeah. the, 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 there was one week and I had I don't know if they were responding to fans and like how the live crowd was going, but like he was putting on banger after banger after banger. And they called him into the general manager's office and t- I think it was Teddy Long. He was like, yo, either Jeff Hardy or CM Punk are winning, uh, are wh- whoever wins the World Heavyweight title match at, at the pay-per-view Sunday, you're facing them Friday. And like then John Morrison got his World Heavyweight title match. He put on a banger, like he was just cooking. And then he left the WWE. But I thought he, he could have been really big when he broke off from his, he, like his, his, his ring presence, his charisma, like the whole shaman of sexy thing, the parkour thing, like that worked. Someone else who I wanted, Bobby Lashley back in the day, I loved him when he debuted, uh, US champion, um, was, was cooking the, the King's Court, King Booker, Finley and all them, uh, ECW champion. He was just about, they put him in, in the title picture with Cena and then, and then he got released soon after that. But I, I felt like if, if he would have stayed, Bobby could have won a King of the Ring tournament. He could have won a Royal Rumble. Um, you know, turned heel sooner. I think. I think he would have needed a a, a, a mouthpiece back then too, and it couldn't have been MVP because he was actively wrestling at right. the time. So I don't know who they would have put. Um, 
uh, Bobby with maybe Tony Atlas, well, like they did with Mark Henry. Put him um, with Teddy Long. Just keep it super black. They, yeah, keep, I mean, yeah. Keep super. <laughs> even though Teddy was a GM, or they could have brought like Ron I Simmons. Had Bobby bidding. What yeah. I, oh, maybe it could like it could have started by having Bobby doing his bidding, and then Teddy's like, "Oh wait, hold on, wait, we could we could take this somewhere." Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I, th I think they had a lot of flexibility, and we at this point everyone is like Bobby should have been a world champion by now. He, yeah. he, he has the look, he has everything for it. Um, and p people like him, people have been wanting more for him. So I think if he would have been able to stay around more, seeing some people come and go, um, especially when Batista left in 2010, I think that that would have been a really good time for Bobby. I mean, Brock, mm -hmm. came, Brock came soon after uh, 2012, but that would have been a really good time for Bobby to step up and be a powers. You know what I just thought about with Cena, actually? Oh, go ahead, Chad, sorry. I was going to say, this is, like, very niche. I think another interesting one would, I guess, Cena, not the whole shield, like, I, but I think, this is I just a personal, like, hill I like. I think, like, Dean Ambrose, like, slick hair back is, like, a really compelling character. And I really would like to see, like, him versus Cena as a heel, him being, like, Hey, I don't care about none of that. Like, I don't, I don't, you talking all this stuff, I wouldn't even hear for, I'm here now. Like, and, <laughs> and you not, you got to step to me now. Like, and like, I would like to see that kind of thing of just like somebody who like, yes, you could have done the whole, like, we need to take down the Mad King, but also just like someone just being like, yeah, I don't, who's John Cena to me? I don't care. Like, that don't mean nothing to me. All that, all that thugonomics, Patriots, I don't care. Like, step to me. And I think that'd be interesting. Just someone like who was had that kind of, cause, because Dean can also talk. Some of these like later yeah. Moxley stuff, I wasn't that big a fan of. But like when he was really like holding the mic like by the top of it, all weird and oh. stuff, like hold it like this when he was talking. That that Dean could have handled Cena because they would have went back and forth all day. Like he could have made fun of him being a rapper. Like he could have came out in like the rap gear and like really took it to his head. I think that would have been a good face to you know bounce yeah. off. But you can go. I think I think they gave us some good possible heel turn Cena material with the Firefly Funhouse this past WrestleMania. You know, we've seen everyone has changed yeah. after fighting Gray. Um, well, what they do with Cena, I mean, one idea I had is like, maybe he comes back as a cocky legend. Like, yo, I, I, I tied Rick. I'm, I'm, I'm the 16 time world champion. I'm done with this nice shit. I'm done with the hustle, hustle loyalty respect. Like, I'm, I'm just about me. Fuck the future of WWE. Like, all, all that shit that he was talking before WrestleMania, like, this completely flipped script, like, you know, and, and he doesn't have to pair with Bray because that would be weird. Like, don't, yeah. don't do that. No, keep him more off. But, him like, rough. let him be this super aggressive, super, like, rude legend coming back, yeah. talking crazy to, to Ricochet, talking crazy to Apollo Crews, talking crazy to Matt Riddle. Like, like imagine yeah. seeing him come back as a heel against Matt Riddle, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's the whole gear. It's like I, I'm here for 17. That's a whole. Just, I'm here for 17. I'm not here. I'm not here to make friends. I'm, I'm here for 17. Like yeah. once I get that, I'm good. And that could be the whole story of like, I don't care if you put me in the Royal Rumble. I don't care if I got to win King of the Ring. I would do whatever you want. But I'm here to get 17. And you could put him in these different like, not like qualifying matches, but just have him be like all this interesting stuff. It's like all right, go go in number one at the Royal Rumble, then and try and win it. And he wins yeah. that. And it's like all right, we'll do X Y Z. All right, I do that. I'm here for 17. And like have him just be a real. And I have him be like. Some of his old like people like like hey like like he sees the miss like miss like hey what got into you bro like you acting real weird like I'm here for seventeen dog I'm here for seventeen yeah like I'm, I'm always happy with more John Cena Miz content so seeing them flip seeing Miz yeah. face and John Cena heel like that would be dope and then um fuck I just had an idea and it just left my head wow I'm tight I'm tight I'm tight hold on it's coming back it's that coming back it's coming back it's coming back. Coming back. I'm trying to make it. Hold on. Somebody go. It's, it's I will say one other thing that I'd like, since I've talked a lot of good things about Cena, I think one of the things that I hope that was really part of the heel turn was that spinner belt. I really hate that spinner belt. I think it's so stupid. And I think it's especially stupid when people not named John Cena have it. Like seeing Triple H with that big ass spinner belt looks ridiculous, bro. Ridiculous. Bring back old gold, punk, or and you guys look dumb. Take that off. Like, I don't, you're not John Cena. It doesn't make any sense. I, I get like the whole merch thing and it's so well, but like that was part of the thing to me. Like, I was like, turn him heel, cause just to get rid of the belt, please. Like, just something. Like, like the new design is so much better than that spinner belt. And I get like that was his thing, but it was like, especially like once he really stopped rapping, it's like, he's not doing that anymore. So why does he still have this spinner belt? Yeah. Please, he has stopped rapping for a while. I'm like, bro, uh, <laughs> he don't do that no more, right? Why? He don't do that. <laughs> 
He don't wear the lock no more. He don't got the lock with the, the thug life on his hands no more. He doesn't do that. He's damn near a patriot. He's basically like Kurt Angle at this point. Like he's not. He's, he doesn't really do that. I, I just that was like one of my like pet peeves. I always hated like when non John Cena's people especially had that spinner belt. But I also love old gold, big gold belt. That's like one of my favorite belts. Nah, that belt was fire when the debut. I remember. I remember my point now. Randy Orton did an interview recently. He said his dream storyline would be for him and Cena to both be tied at, at 16 world titles, for right. Cena to be heel, to be managed by Ric Flair, and they have a retirement match where the, the, the winner gets, gets the, the 17th reign first, and then they both retire. I'm like, yo, Randy. Why did he even book. say that out loud? Oh, my gosh. Give Randy the book. Hey, That's ever since – Ever since Randy went BLM, his third eye's been wide open, bro. His third, <laughs> his third eye's been wide open, dog. Ever since he came home to BLM, dog, wide open, bro. He's seeing it. He's seeing the whole playing field now. He gets it. Oh, my oh, God. Because it's like C C Cena's reigns have been so, like, in your face. like, And, like, obviously Randy's dominated for a while, too. But, like, the, not a lot of people realize Randy's at 13 reigns right now. He's a lot of transition titles. A lot of, like, Randy wanted in between two other big people. Yeah, like, but, like, Randy's put in his time, too. And, honestly, if, if, if they're – like, if Randy were to get the, the record before Cena, I think, a, I think a lot of people would, one, get that or, two, support that. Like, you couldn't – you can't be mad at it. Randy came up in, in the business, third-generation superstar. Like, he's, he's – even if he was lazy at points in his career and uninspired and boring, whatever, like, he's, he's, he's given his time. He's stuck around, like – he, he never quit on the business. He never pulled the bullshit and came back doing UFC shit. Like, he's he stuck around in WWE and gave his time. So, like, you know, them them giving him them reigns and, like, him being John Cena's foil for that match is – I can't think of anybody better. Like, to my be man, My man RKO'd Stacey Keeler to God. Bam. And then, in the, <laughs> the, the Royal Rumble, Nia Jax got it. And he said, what? He said, what? You're – I don't – who? He said, Vince, what do you need from me? I, I don't care. I don't care. What do you I, need from me? Yeah, he can, get, he can get 18. He might get 20 because he'll do whatever Vince wants him to do, bro. You see, you want me to punt Ric Flair to God at 80? No question. I'll, like, send, him, I'll, send, I'll send him home. The thing. And then that's the thing about Randy Orton that, like, when I see, like, people talk about him, whatever, it's just like, here's my first thing. It's like, one, you're still talking about him. Think about how many people you're. we're not still talking about, man. Like, that's something in itself. And then, two, who else, like, what has it been? Like, essentially, yeah, because he came, like, for evolution, nearly 20 plus, 20 tour, for nearly 20 years, like, who's been, like, he's been the consistent, you can count on him to go heel whenever you need a good heel. And then, not only that, he didn't just stick with, like, any crap or whatever and then, like, keep the same style as he had in, like, 2000 or 2000. Like, if you look at him, every year he finds new ways to, like, be evil and, like, in new reasons. Like, when I, whenever he gets on the mic, I'm like, all right, he's about to give me some, like, villain plot that, like, makes sense in some weird way. Like, it's evil, yeah, but, like, I see his motivation. And he comes up with new ways to do that all the time. So he keeps you excited, like, outside the ring. And then inside the ring, he's always, like, the fact that he's leaning into that, like, you know, the Viper and, like, setting people up and, like, kind of how, like, Triple H was or whatever. The fact that he's leaning that and into that, like, is a testament to, yeah, I, I'm older. Like, yeah, like, that's how it would, like, he's making, it makes sense with the wrestling. And it makes sense that he's, like, when I watched him in that last match against Keith Lee, I was just, like, yeah, like, this is, like, Wait, the way you're wrestling makes so much sense. You're this character, you're selling it amazingly, and it's just really just Randy Orton. And it's just like, bro, you got to respect that at some point. Like, Lee um, would be another one for Cena, too. Yeah, if Cena went heel and Lee, Lee stepped to him, like, get kind of on the Dean Arrows thing of like, hey, like, I know you was a big deal, but like, it's, it's <laughs> Keith Lee hours, dog. It's, <laughs> we on, we on, we we on, we we basking in the glory right now, big guy. <laughs> and like, and they all because also because Keith Lee honestly does have that same kind of like i'm this is almost too corny but i'm here for it that like john cena had when he was at his peak where it's like yeah i'm, I'm with you john i'm with you this is a little corny but i'm with you where keith lee is like yeah. that too where it's like i'm with you because you're so fired the ring i'm with you and, and then every that, once in a while if you hear him talking too like that's how he'll bring me like when he was uh i forgot i damn i think i can't remember was it the adam cole match i can't remember which match it was but like 
he had just put a move on somebody and he was like, I must break him. And I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, he be talk, he be talk to me a match. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yes. Like, yes. Like, like, thank you. Like, yes. Like, he gets be it. in the ring and like, be realistic. Like, yeah, like, I'm about to break this thing down. But also, like, the reference was hilarious at the same time. Yeah, I think, I think a good way to turn Cena heel and serve newer talent would be to have him like coming in talking crazy to Keith Lee. Talking yeah. crazy to Matt Riddle. Um, talking crazy to anyone else who they bring up. Cena versus Adam Cole, I'm here for it. Cena versus Roderick Strong, Kyle O'Reilly, I'm here for it. Cena versus Damian Priest. It, it, like, or, or imagine, like, if, uh, th Cena's too big for this to ever happen. But if he went down to, like, a a NXT for a month, just a month. Open challenge. Just, just, Anybody who wanted could get it. Just a month for a couple matches, you know, yeah, a couple game, work, game. like... Just, See, our, like, it, you know, it, it'll be weird. It wouldn't make sense, but it would just be so amazing. Like, because there's so many talents, like, athletically, and then just what Cena, psych psych psychologically, what he brings to the ring, the way he works with people, like, come on. He, he would give us some classics. Bro, Cena and Timothy That would, be I feel great. like that would be a banger. Like, they would, like, they understand. Oh, man. Go ahead, Chan. Yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I was just naming the next that would go crazy. Like, Cena Ciampa, Cena Balor. Cena Walter, Cena Tyler Braid, Cena Pete Dunn. Uh, that, it would just, they would just go stupid. Yeah, he could have like open challenge. Like, kind of like we were talking about. It's like, yeah, like, brother, like, I'm here. I'm better than y'all. <laughs> who wants who wants to get this work tonight? Yeah. And then you would just have people just come. Cena Velveteen Dream, honestly, might break the internet, but I'm here for it. Yeah. For it. It'll, be, it'll be spicy, man. So I think all of this to say, as much as we realize Cena turning heel wasn't for the wasn't what's best for business for the wwe there were a lot of avenues that they could have potentially went with it um i really do love that that brock idea y'all had um that keith lee idea like i'm, I'm envisioning it now and yeah like I, I think i think we need to bring back brash cocky talk your shit like i'm that nigga john cena and if you're untouchable like i i think that would be a great way to to send him off because he's you know, like, and he's probably going to make a bunch of more money and do a lot more movies. But in terms of WWE, he's done everything that there is to do besides win the Intercontinental title. So I, I, I think you bring him back and you send him off as this, this cocky, cocky legend, like just putting over young talents and kind of elevating them the same way MVP is doing. Like, I, I think I, I think there's something there. So even if it's not practical or realistic, you know, put, put us in, in the writer's room and we can, we can make some magic happen and make y'all some money. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Uh, yeah, that's that. So these are the, the rewriters. Um, as always, tune into the A Show with J5 and Meals. Turn into the, tune, in, tune into the War Report with Cyrus and his friends and spot caller, callers whenever that, that drops next. Uh, so for CC, for Channing, for Armand, for the Bianca Belair Club, for Otis Watch, for the, the limitless hive. Yes, sir. Thank you.